Hey guys and welcome back to the next tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to cover off operators and operands. What are operators? Operators are anything that take two different variables and add some kind of a modification in between. So what do I mean by that? Let's look a quick example right here. So if I do something like 5 plus 5. Now in this scenario the plus sign here is what we call an operator because what it's going to do is it's going to modify this and this and create the answer 10. So anytime you add whether it's a plus, minus, multiplication, division, exponent, quotient, or remainder, these are the most common types of operators that you're going to go through. In this scenario, 5 plus 5, the plus like I said, is the operator. An operand are basically the things that you're going to do the modifications to. So in this scenario, 5 and the second 5 are both considered operands. So you have one operand plus the operator plus the operand. That's as much as you need to know when it comes to operands. It's just what you're modifying and that's about it. So let's focus through some exercises and go through some of these in terms of how we can start using these in Python. Now we talked about variables very slightly in the previous tutorial. So why don't we just have a quick example. So we'll say y is equal to 5 plus 5. Now what I've done here is I said I'm going to take 5 and 5 and whatever the answer to this is and I'm going to store this. So I'm going to store the answer of this expression into this variable y. And now what that's going to allow me to do is I'm going to be able to go and say print y. And now what that's going to do is it's going to output the answer 10. Very similarly I can say 5 minus 5 and I can again hit run and I get 0. Same thing with multiplication, this is going to give you 25. So we'll just quickly run through all of these just so that you have some idea. So 25, we do 5 divided by 5, that should give us 1. And when we're doing exponent, 5 to the power of 5. So, so in Python, the way you do an exponent is you'll just do 5 to the double star 5. What that basically means is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. And that's going to give you 3,125 as an answer. Now, we don't always use quotients and remainders in life. Uh, the last time I used a quotient or a remainder was, I think, when I was in grade school. So it's not something we use often, but in programming, sometimes it does come in handy. There are times when I've used quotients and, and remainders, but at a, at a very high level, what a quotient and a remainder is, let's say I have an answer like 56.7. With this, the, re the quotient is actually going to be 56. So it's going to be whatever's on the left-hand side before the decimal place. And the remainder for, say, something like 10 divided by 3. If you remember back in the day when we used to be in grade school, uh, we used to calculate remainders by doing, you know, how many times is 3 divided into 10? Divides in once, and then there's one left over. So the remainder would be 1 in this case. But we're going to run these in Python and just show you what that means. So if I go y is equal to... And I'll say 45 quotient 4. So let's see what that gives us. So when you run this, that's going to give you 11. And that's because when you do 45 divided by 4, that's going to give you 11 and change. So it's going to give you 11 with a remainder of 1. So very similar, if I did y remainder, sorry, y is equal to 45 remainder 4, that should give me 1 which it does right there. In this scenario, I've basically said I can, if I to just bring up my little pencil here, it would say that I can divide 4 into 45. I can do this 11 times. I'll get 44. And this is going to be my quotient. Sorry, 44 is going to be your quotient. And then since you have one left over, that will be your remainder. So if you remember that back in math, that's kind of all that really says. So again, if we wanted to look at that again, 4 into 45, your quotient will be 11, and your remainder will be 1. So the next thing we're going to talk about is order of operations. So I'm sure you remember from grade school the term bedmus. And bedmus basically means brackets, exponent, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. And so what that means, when I have an expression, so when I have something like y is equal to, in brackets, 5 plus 6 
times 6 divided by 2 plus 1. All right, well, let's break down how this would actually get calculated. So the way this gets executed is we first start with whatever's in the brackets. So we're going to say y is equal to 5 plus 6, which is 11, times 6 divided by 2 plus 1. And so now the computer is going to go and say, all right, I don't have any exponents, but I do have a division. So I'm going to say y is equal to 11 times 3 plus 1. And now so y is going to say the next thing, order of operation, is multiplication. So 11 times 3 is 33 plus 1. So y should equal to 34. Now, if I don't get this right, I really need to go back to grade school. And it'd be pretty embarrassing given the fact that I'm an engineer and math is supposed to be something that is second nature to me. So let's run this and see what happens. Let's go print y and that's going to give us 34. That is how the order of expressions work. They work in the order of Bedmas. These are the most common operators that you'll find in Python. We went through what an operand is. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at this expression. And I'm not going to run the answer here. I will post the answer in the comments below. But what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and try to solve for this and see what Python is going to give you as an answer. So first try to solve for it for, with yourself, the way that I did it where I broke it up line by line and see if that is what Python is going to give you as an answer. And then you can go ahead and just print Y this and it'll give you the answer anyway. So, so give it a shot, post your results in the comments, let me know what you thought about this video, what I can add, remove, change, and whatnot. I'm always looking to improve the videos one way or another, and most importantly, the learning experience for you guys as well. So again, if you found this content helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. And until then, we'll see you in the next video.